I have a question for you. For those of you who are watching this, have you ever seen a real life shark in the water? Do you see this one? Here, let me get a little closer. Tell me when you can see it. Look at that. It's a little bit of interactive video here. See it now? But what if I zoom in a little bit? How about now? 1916. And that giant shark painting, the mural right there. I guess that's a spillway. Today we're in Matawan, New Jersey. Oh, baby ghoul. Seriously though, if you were to see a shark that big, what would you do? Die of fright. Die of fright? Yeah. Would you say, we're gonna need a bigger boat? Am I in the water or out of the water? <laughs> Good question. I think different responses for different situations, but I have heard if you're swimming and a shark approaches you to punch them in the nose. I don't think you should punch a shark. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I heard that too, to be honest. I mean, why not, right? Like I said, today we're in Matawan, New Jersey. Today we're gonna be covering the 1916 shark attacks that inspired the book and the movie that we all know and love known as Jaws. Now here's where things get fun. How many times have you seen the movie Jaws? Right? A lot. I mean, it's a classic. It's a staple in anybody's life if you love horror. They actually mentioned the 1916 shark attacks in the movie. Look, the situation is that apparently a great white shark has staked a claim in the waters off Amity Island. And he is going to continue to feed here as long as there is food in the water. And there's no limit to what he's going to do. I mean, we've already had three incidents. Two people killed inside of a week, and it's going to happen again. It happened before. The Jersey Beach. 1916, 1916 there were five, five people chewed up in the surf. In one week. So it's like a little, little nod to the inspiration to the tale of Bruce the shark. Right now we're walking this trail. It's alongside the road. The road is on the left-hand side and the train tracks are on the right-hand side. And back here at the end of this path, we're gonna get a closer look at that Jaws mural. Now I'm gonna go ahead and date this video. At the time of recording this, it's 2023. And keep in mind that these shark attacks, this event that happened here in Matawan, New Jersey that inspired nightmare fuel for a lot of people because this is basically where the fear of sharks kind of really hit home for a lot of people. That this all took place in 1916 and it was so long ago. So there's really not much left that we can go, oh yeah, that lines up. But we're gonna do our best to try to piece this all together, this story. Now, baby ghoul, the first time I ever saw the movie Jaws, was at my grandmother's house in New Jersey. I remember being up at night, sleeping in her bed. She was sound asleep. And I was watching Jaws and it terrified the crap out of me. And it didn't help that the very next day, we went to the ocean. That, Jaws is one of those movies that I thought I've seen in totality since I was a kid. And it turns out I'm just so familiar with all the famous clips that are often played in commercials or um, around the parks and things and I didn't realize until my 30s I hadn't watched it from start to finish and it didn't help that I was already terrified of this one picture where a great white shark is about to break surface but it's shot from beneath the water from a pie so you just see this massive mouth waiting to swallow you up I really wasn't sure if I would dig Jaws I thought it was cool but I hadn't really seen it. And then I saw it, I was like, yeah, I, I understand why people are uh, now so fascinated with Shark Week and shark attacks and terrified of the deep sea because me too. Looks like we have reached the end of the line, so to speak. I feel like, okay, 
unintentionally, I feel like this video is gonna be filled with a whole bunch of shark and ocean and fish one-liners or puns, if you will. Completely unintentional. Complete respect for Matawan, New Jersey and those who lost their lives during 1916. But this is what we came back here for. Get a closer look at that guy. Like I said, the events that happened here in 1916 are an inspiration to the story that we all know of Jaws. Now, as we tell this story, as we piece what happened here in Matawan, New Jersey together, you're gonna go, wait a second. Ah, the movie Jaws, it makes sense. It's kind of trippy, to be honest. Now, don't get me wrong, this mural is really, really cool. And the fact that it's still here, I don't know when it was put up. It definitely wasn't put here in 1916. But if we were to go through these tunnels to the body of water that's on the other side, that is where the shark attacks happened. That is where the Wyckoff docks once stood. And uh, we can't get back there. We can get close but we can't get back there and stand where the docks once stood. Just a heads up. Now, before we begin, let's talk about some of the similarities between real life and the movie Jaws. The first one being this, and it's a big one. The movie takes place across 4th of July weekend. In real life, the shark attacks here in Matawan happened from July 1st to July 12th. If you open the beaches on the 4th of July, it's like ringing the dinner bell for Christ's Look, sakes. Mr. Vaughn, for Christ's sake, tomorrow's the 4th of July, and we will be open for business. It's gonna be one of the best summers we've ever had. Now, baby girl, July 1st, 1916, the first victim of the shark attacks here on the Jersey Shore was a man on vacation who went swimming, and supposedly he was a very good swimmer. He swam out like 120 or 130 yards. Like, to me, that's nuts. Like, you're gonna be lucky if you get us out up to our knees, right? Oh, waist even, you are adventurous. Now, I've read two different accounts. First one being, he came to the beach with his dog. The other one being, a dog followed him to the beach, it's like some random stray dog, and went into the water with him, doggy paddling just like that. And uh, the story goes, he was yelling for the dog to go back to shore. And that's whenever the shark attacked. So now we have, Fourth of July weekend, the movie Jaws, as well as a dog at the beach swimming in the water. Remember the scene? The second shark attack happened on July 6th, a little further up the coast. And then we come to Matawan, which was on July 12th, where 11-year-old boy Lester Stilwell and a man known as Stanley Fisher died in Matawan Creek. Now notice I said creek. Up until this event, people's knowledge and fears of shark were rather small. And this changed everything. Now, this is a creek. We are nowhere near the ocean. I'm gonna say almost two miles, maybe a mile and a half, somewhere in there. At some point in 1916, for whatever reason, it is believed that a shark swam up the Jersey coast, made its way here to this creek, made about almost a mile and a half, two miles inland, and attacked. The summer of 1916 here in New Jersey was absolutely insane. I mean, picture this. People in boats with dynamite and guns shooting into the water trying to kill a man-eater, a shark. And that brings us to the next little inspiration for Jaws. If you remember in the movie, the town's mayor, they were like, hey, whoever catches this shark, whoever kills it, they'll get a reward. That happened in real life. Is the kid who was missing 
Tell us what the hell they're doing back there now. They're chilling right now. Tell they're, me, what the hell is that? They're trucking the shark now. $8,000 to buy it four ways is what? In the movie Jaws, we knew the man-eater was a great white shark. Here in Matawan, they had no idea what to expect, what to think. Could it be a great white shark? Could it be a bull shark? Who knew? I will say this, they did kill a shark and it was very famously photographed. And for a period of time, it was on display in a department store in New York City and it got stolen. Nobody knows what happened to it, but we do have a photo. And even more stranger, when they cut it open, they found flesh and bones and enough human remains to fill almost two buckets, like 15 pounds of human flesh. So they believe they caught the man-eater, the shark. And once they did this, once that shark was caught, there were no more shark attacks. Right now we're standing on a bluff that's overlooking Matawan Creek. And this is the best vantage point that we're gonna get unless we were in a boat out in the water. And even then, there's really nothing to line up anymore. But as we pan the camera over to the right, you're gonna see that little bit of body of water there. Right now, we would have been standing right above where the Wyckoff docks were. You see that building that's off, to, off in the distance? So from there, wrapping around this bend to where we are standing, right below us. That's how massive these wooden docks were. And right now the tide is a little high. It's not as high as it usually gets. At full tide, all of those, the brown weeds that you see out in the water can be covered. But once the tide gets lower, like almost to the, the creek bed where it's mud, you can still see some of the, the the Wyckoff docks pylons or wooden pillars? beams. Yes, yeah, support beams, the pillars. So right off that dock, right there in that water, is where the shark attack happened here in Matawan, New Jersey. Basically, what happened is this. July 12th, 1916, 11-year-old Lester Stilwell and his friends come down here to Wyckoff Docks for a day of swimming. It's a pretty hot day. Not too long after they jump in the water, they see what appears to be like a log floating in the water. And not too long after they notice this, Lester Stilwell is pulled under the water by a shark. He gets attacked by a shark. Witnesses say that the muddy creek water was turning red with blood. And Lester's cries, his screams, were so deafening that people were doing everything that they could to get out of the water. People, at this point, started running towards town to try to find help. And it's at this point, a man by the name of Stanley Fisher comes to the rescue. When Stanley gets here, there's already a bunch of people in the water searching for the boy. And it takes them a long time to find him, but eventually, Stanley emerges from the water carrying the body of Lester. And as he does this, the shark attacks him. Being attacked by the shark himself, Stanley drops Lester's body in the water. And Stanley actually gets pulled under a couple of different times before people on shore save him. They pull him out. Sadly, he dies a little bit later on on the way to the hospital. Now, once again, the town people here at Matawan go back to finding or trying to find Lester's body. And if we were to follow this bank a little bit further over this way, there used to be an old train trestle over there. And right below the train trestle in the water is where they find his body. Right now I'm standing on Dock Street, which back in the day, back in 1916, Dock Street was the way that the Matawan residents would get down to Wyckoff Docks to go swimming in Matawan Creek. Now, sadly, we can't get back there today for safety concerns, that, and it's also private property, we asked, but we can do our best at trying to get some photos or, well, show what it looks like today. But before we do that, you might've noticed this as I was panning the camera. It's a plaque for the Matawan shark attack. 
On July 12, 1916, a shark made its way into Matawan Creek and took the lives of two Matawan residents. Lester Stillwell, an 11-year-old boy, was swimming with friends in the creek here at the end of Dock Street when he was attacked by the shark. Stanley Fisher, a 24-year-old tailor, came to his rescue and was also attacked by the shark as he tried to locate Lester in the murky waters of the creek. Sadly, Lester and Stanley did not survive these attacks. And this plaque, in loving memory, and as a tribute to Stanley's bravery. Talking to some of the people that live here on Dock Street, they told me whenever they first put the plaque here, the original plan was to put it over here, but they were having a lot of problems with overgrowth and weeds and poison ivy, so they put it where it, where it stands today. Now again, we're not gonna be able to get down there for safety reasons as well as, well, it's private property, but we can walk up to the fence, walk up to the gate. Now, over the years, at some point, there's always been a building here on this property. So, back then in 1916, whenever Lester Stillwell and anybody else were to come down here to go swimming at Wyckoff Docks, this is the road that they would have taken, or pathway, down to the water. To give you an idea where I'm standing, this is that building that could be seen across the water when I was telling the story about what happened in the water. Now, of course, back then, water levels were a lot different. There's even a street here uh, where there's a creek that some of the steamboats, they would come into town. It's crazy to think that, I mean, 1916 to today, this is what it looks like. Just look at how beautiful and peaceful this looks. It's beautiful, right? And if you squint just right and look at the horizon right about there, you can actually see New York City. The view is beautiful, but at the same exact time, this is probably the saddest part of our story happened right here on this bridge. You see, July 12th, 1916, it was the morning, and a sea captain was on the bridge here, and he spots a shark swimming under the bridge towards the town of Matawan. We got New York City and the ocean that way, and then if we turn the camera and we look over this way, Matawan, where Lester Stillwell was swimming with his friends. Now, I have no idea which way the sea captain was facing whenever he spotted the shark, but let's just say he was facing this way because it's towards the ocean. And just, I'm getting a little freaked out just thinking about it. Can you imagine just standing here and seeing a shark swimming towards you and then just disappearing under the bridge that you're standing on? And then in horror and disbelief, running across the bridge to the other side to watch the shark swimming out towards the community. And I say this is probably the saddest part of the story because nobody believed him whenever he told people that a shark was heading towards the town. Nobody. Again, something that's straight out of the movie Jaws, right? I knew that the bridge that's here today is not the original bridge that was standing in 1916 when the shark attacks happened. I just didn't know when this bridge was built. The plaque here says 2018. But even though it's not the original bridge, it is in the original location. Right now we're standing in Memorial Park in pretty much the center of Matawan, New Jersey. And it basically it's a circle with a bunch of different markers about things that happened that have to do with Matawan. And of course, they have one here for the tragic 1916 Matawan shark attack. And it is massive. I mean, it is almost as tall as you are. Feel free to pause this video at any time so you can go ahead and read and take a look at some of the pictures. I'm gonna point out a few different things. It says the tragic 1916 Matawan shark attack 
And there are three different pitches there. The first one being Lester Stillwell. The one right in the middle is Matawan Creek. And it looks like it's got to be the bend with the dock. And then Stanley Fisher, the pitcher on the right. I'm going to go ahead and frame this shot like this. By all means, pause it, read it, and then unpause and let's continue the adventure whenever you are ready. All right, you good? All right, we got more to see. Of course, this wouldn't be a Grim Life Collective video without going into a cemetery. This cemetery right here is Rose Hill Cemetery in the town of Matawan. And this is where you'll find the final resting place of Lester Stillwell as well as Stanley Fisher. Usually I really love showing cemetery gates, but these ones here at Rose Hill really aren't that big. But that's okay because there's another sign as you walk into the cemetery that's very unique. Something I really haven't seen before. And here it is right here. No trespassing. Violators will be prosecuted. If you must pass, then please tread lightly. Be respectful, say their names aloud, and be mindful that there is a special place in the afterlife for those that desecrate these sacred final resting places. Driving through the cemetery, it's really not that big. In fact, finding Stanley Fisher was pretty easy. Right now, Jessica is standing right in front of the father and mother tombstones for the Fisher family. And right behind them is the Fisher family monument. Now Stanley's final resting place is right over here in the corner. Just a simple stone. It's crazy. So, I mean, unless you knew what to look for, you wouldn't know anything. Died 1916, right next to Florence and Nana. Now, here's an interesting thought. Lester Stilwell and Stanley Fisher died on the same day. Were there funerals on the same day? Now, I ask this because what you're looking at right now in the center of your screen is the final resting place of Lester Stilwell, the 11 year old boy who basically his death is what inspired Jaws. Well, his, the, the whole shark attack from July 1st to July 12th. But he's buried here, Lester, and right about there, just the top of the hill is where Stanley's final resting place is. Unlike Stanley, Lester's tombstone actually has a date on it. Lester Stillwell, 1904 to 1916. And a couple different kids' toys. We got a fire truck, two baseballs, a kid's baseball mitt, a rock that says smile, and it's like a toy from Walt Disney World that's Epcot there. Now Jessica has been patiently waiting and doing crazy little dances in the street for us to go over here to this pond to investigate the sound and see turtles. some of the fish. You see turtles? Yeah, a bunch of turtles. This is, you know what, it's a small but very beautiful cemetery. Looks like most of the fish have moved over their opposite pond, but directly across from where we are, you can barely make it out. They're soft shell, kind of grayish turtles sitting up on the bank. Most of them already jumped in the water, but there's one at least still sitting up on the bank, getting some sun. I'm not gonna touch them, but there's a little path around the pond. So I'm gonna see if I can't sneak up on a turtle, maybe get a close up shot of a turtle. If not, that's okay. I'm happy just to be here. Did you just do a sneaking up on a turtle dance? Yeah, it goes like this. <laughs> <laughs> it 
It's like almost like you're moving in reverse because you got to be real slow and sneak up on them. Now this explains why you're not stomping in the, the dead leaves. No. Because you're being sneaky. Sneaky. For you guys at home. I'm going to hang back here just so she can Squirrels. hopefully... You feel it. The anticipation. Oh, no luck. He went in the water. Contrary to what you might believe, it is not easy to sneak up on a turtle. Not when they're on the side of a pond. They just plop right in and run away. But I can see them from here, though. They're very well blended. There's a lot of leaves in the pond, so they look like big leaves. But you can tell because their little heads are poking up in the water. You can see him here swimming, right in the center. And with that being said, thank you for joining us on another grim adventure, this time to Matawan, New Jersey, visiting the sites that inspired the book and the movie, Jaws. Until next time, happy Halloween. Is that it stays? Good luck never stays a day. A bad luck's always a coming my way. 